latest vortex message we have is from 917 that's a little less than an hour ago uh, the hurricane hunters are reporting 965 millibars those little white dots you see on your screen there 975 millibar maximum surface winds about 80 miles per hour and th that's important the surface information because that's what the, pe the people on land are going to be feeling in South Texas but uh, we're, we're talking gust up to 80 when they say the winds are sustained at 80 you're probably going to get gust to 80 on land you're not going to get those sustained winds but uh, we're going to be watching that surface information as this moves on shore to see if these winds increase uh, at the surface now as far as the flight level winds uh, flight level winds we have uh, 71 knots which is 81 uh, 81 miles per hour in the flight level winds and uh, we were talking with Derek Ort from the Northwest Hemisphere Hurricane Center on the Hurricane Warning Show last night and he was mentioning that when the temperature on the outside of the eye wall is uh, much different than the temperature on the inside of the eye wall that's an indic indicative of a strengthening system and if it's like d 10 degree difference then there's going to be rapid intensification right now we're at about seven degree difference between the inner eye and the outside of the eye so uh, we're getting uh, some intensification here um, based on the recon reports and again the maximum flight level winds are um, 92 knots in the northern quadrant which is uh, category 2 strength winds in the northern side of the uh, eye wall of Hurricane Dolly and there's small breaks on the eye wall on, on the side spiraling bands are still good according to the hurricane hunters and uh, we're going to keep an eye on these vortex messages of course the hurricane hunters are flying out there in the C-130 right now and they are dropping uh, drop zones in the system and uh, reporting back to the National Hurricane Center what the findings are on the winds uh, uh, that they're they're finding in the center of the hurricane and of course these vortex messages pop up on our screen so we'll let you know when the new ones come in now we're also monitoring the hurricane watch let let's turn the volume up on this quickly because there was some chatter a little earlier and let's see if we have anything we'll give it about a minute and then we'll go look for some breaking news from the major networks and um, we're going to try to get in touch with some people here as well uh, let's go ahead and turn up the Hurricane Watch Net and see what we have going on. You're very light, but I do copy you and I can put out a call if you wish. Okay, our, uh, were you hearing the area a moment ago, John? Kind of. Very, very weak, but it means at least I was starting to hear that area, so I can, I can give it another go. But any station in the affected area, Anyone in the affected area of Hurricane Dolly that would like to give us some real-time information to uh, give to the National Weather Service and National Hurricane Center in Miami, uh, please call November Papa 2 Bravo. In the affected area of Hurricane Dolly with any real-time information for us to relate to the National Hurricane Center, this is NB2B. Fletcher, I am hearing nothing. Go ahead. Okay, very good. Okay. Okay, this is the Padre Island webcam, uh, courtesy of FLHurricane.com. They're doing a great job over there. Uh, Michael Cornelius has been operating that site for years, and uh, he's put these cams up uh, because the South Padre Island webcams have been down, and somehow he's grabbing these images uh, from their site somehow. So we appreciate him putting these up on the on the site. And this is the uh, Instacam here, and I'm not sure if if this is. Uh, real-time camera right now there's no timestamp on this so we don't really know if this is a live cam but I, I'm assuming it is uh, some pretty good wave action it's kind of hard to see on your screen because it's uh, such a bright image uh, let's go ahead and get out of that so a little while ago that's like 915 we're talking uh, a little over an hour ago and 965 millibars let's take a look at a radar from weather tap and there it is uh, this is a current image and um, some very strong banding off the coast of Brownsville right now and unfortunately we don't have any Brownsville webcams to show you so uh, we just have to kind of wing it with what's happening there and at Brownsville we currently have a pressure of 29.43 inches we have uh, winds gusting to 60 miles per hour in Brownsville right now so they're they're under it they're dealing with it right now and it's only going to get worse um, Let's go ahead and check some other areas. In Harrigan, just to the north, we have pressure 29.55 inches. 
and uh, winds gusting to 52 miles per hour in Harlingen, which is just to the northwest. This is uh, right here where my mouse pointer is up on the screen, 52 miles per hour. Look at Corpus Christi and see what they're dealing with. They're dealing with gusts up to 46 miles per hour and a pressure of 2980. That's at the very top of your screen up in here. Now the eye is right off the shore of Brownsville, moving in very slowly. And um, that's our situation here is at 1025 a.m. That will not be the case. So we may very well be dealing with the worst of this uh, over the next hour or so. But right now, Dolly's just kind of got a mind of her own. She says, look, I don't feel like coming ashore right now. I'm feeling the friction of the coastline. Since I'm moving so slow anyway, I might as well take my sweet time moving in. And that's exactly what's happening. Unfortunately, that's a real bad thing. A, because it gives people a false sense of security. And they think they can come out and roam on the beach. All right, and B, we're talking about what could be huge rainfall rates in the tune of about 10 to 20 inches. One of the things Dr. Lyons talked about uh, just a little while ago with his report was the fact that offshore, some of the radar estimates are in the tune of 12 to 14 inches. That moves onshore, and we're in big trouble in the Rio Grande Valley. And that's exactly why emergency managers and National Guard are on standby and did a great job of trying to get as many people as they could out of harm's way. Levees not as high as they were back in 67 with Beulah, and we had catastrophic flooding back then. So that will continue to be a huge concern. All right, guys, here's the deal. Uh, we reported earlier of an apartment roof collapse. That is a false report. It uh, came to us, and it is not... It cannot be verified, so we are taking that one. Okay, we're going to leave up that live Corpus Christi cam for you here uh, because of the, what's going on in Corpus Christi, potential tornado. Now, I just got a report of a uh, roof from a mobile home that's been blown off in Brownsville. The um, ASOS reported gusts of 60 miles an hour at the time of the report, and that was from the National Weather Service in Brownsville. Um, public advisory from Cameron. Again, a mobile home roof has blown off in Brownsville and that was a gust of 60 miles per hour. Still live streaming here so we're hoping they flip it around if we have a tornado we'll be able to see what's going on. Okay, we have a new uh, Vortex message. Let's zoom that in on the herd track program. And here we go uh, as of 1417 which is uh, um, 1015, that's about 45 minutes old. We have a vortex message showing 70 knots at the surface. Pressure is down to 964 millibar, so it's dropped another millibar. Um, maximum flight level information, 81 knots, that's 91 miles per hour at flight level. And the differential temperature between the inner and outer eye is only about 5 degrees now, so that's gone down, which means that, uh, four, four, dip, 4 degrees difference. So um, maybe this is stabilizing. Uh, usually like to see a big difference uh, between the inner and outer eye temperatures. We're talking inside the eye, 17 degrees Celsius. And outside of the eye, we're talking uh, 13 degrees Celsius, um, which um, you'd like to see a big differential there. And that uh, Derek, uh, we had Derek on the broadcast last night. He was telling us the difference and what, what that means as far as strengthening is concerned. So that's the latest. We have a maximum flight level wind of 86 knots in the northeast quadrant, and that's 96 miles per hour at the, uh, in the northeast quadrant out over the ocean. So the worst of it has yet to move on shore. Again, let's look at that latest radar from WeatherTap, and there it is. A beautiful symmetrical system here. Uh, Again, most of the convection is pinwheeling through Brownsville right now, and that's probably why that mobile home roof just got ripped off. And uh, we'll let you know if any other reports come in with this feeder band, this very strong feeder band to the south of the eye wall. And again, here's our current position of the hurricane right on the shore of Texas, Mexico, and moving slowly on shore up the hurricane. Watch that quickly and see if we got any good audio coming in.
at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, 1500 Zulus. The center of Hurricane Valley was located at 5 a.m. and it's not flying near latitude 26 decimal zero north, longitude 97 decimal zero west. So about 30 miles or 50 kilometers east northeast of Brownsville, Texas. Dolly is moving toward the northwest near 7 miles per hour or 11 kilometers per hour. A west northwest wind motion is increased in low speed as expected later today. There's a look at the satellite imagery. I'm going to zoom in and show you that eye wall that looks um, pretty good right now in satellite. It has managed to stay together over the last couple of hours and looking really good on the satellite. I'm, I'm not surprised that they bumped it to a Category 2 and further strengthening could happen within the next uh, one to two hours uh, as we head for landfall. And we think landfall is again going to happen anywhere between the southern Texas border and northern Mexico. Uh, that tornado watch that was just issued, that larger box, is in effect till 7 p.m. As she mentioned, a tornado has been spotted. We're also getting word of a roof collapse on South Padre. That's where Claudia is standing by. Hi, Claudia, what are you hearing outside of the, the high wind in your ear? Well, you know, it's interesting because you can hear the winds whistle. It's kind of an eerie sensation to be uh, in the middle of this uh, hurricane event because the winds are very loud. Uh, right now we're getting a bit of a break in the rain, but it's been raining here all morning. But take a look at the effects of these tropical storm force winds out in the ocean behind me just really whipping up that surf. Uh, the waves now covering what was uh, yesterday at this time. A nice wide beach. Uh, Jane, throughout the morning we have been uh, hearing reports that there has been a roof collapse at an apartment complex here in South Padre. We haven't been able to confirm it, but we think we're at that apartment complex because take a look at these pieces of plastic. We believe this is part of a skylight mm. from one of the nearby buildings here. You can see these pieces of plastic are just strewn all over this grass. You have to be pretty careful out here because debris is starting to fly around. Anything that isn't nailed down it's going to go flying in these very st strong winds. Like We're your hat as well. <laughs> that's blowing around. When this thing passes, it'll be interesting to see how the shape of these dunes changes as a result of, of Hurricane Dolly. Okay, Claudia, we're going to give you a break. How it is that we can cover a hurricane live in real time? Well, here's a sample. This is our quick response vehicle. It's on South Padre Island. Uh, it's, a, it's a QRV, quick response vehicle, but it's, a, it's also an SUV. We've got all-wheel drive on that thing, and uh, we can send it just about anywhere and bring you live pictures like the ones you're seeing there. Uh, you're seeing the wiper blades actually uh, pass back and forth in front of the camera lens, but this thing is broadcasting live from South Padre Island. Not a lot of uh, traffic on the streets there, as you can see. This one emergency vehicle in front of it looks like uh, some kind of a maintenance truck or something. But those are live pictures from the QRV, the quick response vehicle that Fox News has ready to cover this storm. Look at this roof coming off right here. Can you see it? Look at that roof. There goes the roof blowing off a building right here. This is an apartment complex called the uh, Park Lane Apartments, and we just saw the roof blowing off of it. Yeah. I don't know if you could see that on the on the camera or not, but uh, yeah, it's 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 starting into being uh, Dolly's definitely coming with a punch today, you know. And we see that street sign lying there in the road. That's already gone. Uh, clearly, the storm is going to cause some problems. Guy Hernandez roaming around in our quick response vehicle there on South Padre Island, Texas. Guy, uh, take Ooh, care of yourself. Yep. Wow. There you go. All right. Talk to you later. All All right. Right. Rough. Yeah, that's that's some of that uh, oh, stuff man. you're talking about, that apartment that building roof coming off there in big sheets. You know, Claudia was saying that she thought maybe it was at the hotel she was at because they saw those shards from what looked like a skylight. That almost looks like there's more than one building where this is happening, which is probably not a surprise. It's yeah. happening in one spot. It's probably happening in others as well. Again, 95 mile an hour, or actually 96 mile an hour winds, nothing to be messed with, even a Category 1 or a 2 hurricane is a very powerful thing. Yeah. Um, wanted to mention that a uh, little bit of statistics about the area that's going to be affected today, Brownsville, Texas. That's our current feature at Hurricane City. And the area has um, a population of about 140,000 along the Rio Grande Valley and 860,000, uh, which is the 56th largest market in the United States. So this is not one of the larger cities in the United States population-wise. 
uh, good thing there's not as many people to be affected. Um, the um, famous people with ties to the area, Chris Christopherson uh, is from this area. Uh, agriculture, we have about uh, 455,000 to 573,000 acres of land that are dedicated to farming, ranching, cotton, grain, corn, sugarcane, cabbage, onions, bell peppers, tomatoes, carrots, and citrus. So that will be affected this afternoon by Hurricane Dolly. As far as business interruption, uh, we're talking shrimping, deep water harbors, computer industry, manufacturing, uh, metals, the University of Texas at Brownsville. Um, this is the sixth fastest growing manufacturing region in the United States and they're big into electronics and food processing down in this area. So these are all of the risks uh, coming up here today. Um, mentioned last night on the broadcast that the uh, oil rig situation out there, uh, only about 5% of the oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico are within range of Hurricane Dolly. So this is not uh, a big factor as far as oil production being shut down. It's a very small percentage, uh, and that includes natural gas as well. So uh, that's the situation from, uh, from this area. Now as far as hazards, the Rio Grande River could be big trouble uh, in flooding. Uh, Brownsville is 45 feet above sea level, however, so the city of Brownsville is not going to get any storm surge out of this. But a caller or an emailer last night mentioned that the um, uh, Rio Grande River at times is so cut off because of all the dams that have been built that sometimes you can walk across the mouth of it to get to the other side. So uh, apparently, I mean, that's not going to be the case today because the, the tide levels are going to be high. Now, speaking of tide levels, we're expecting a, uh, this is working out to the benefit of uh, storm surge potential because high tide was this morning at um, 8.52 Pacific time and the, uh, the low tide is going to be at uh, around 3 p.m. Pacific time today. So it's going to be hitting at low tide. When the, when the back side of this eye wall comes on shore, it's going to be hitting at low tide, which is good news. They're not going to be dealing with as much of a surge uh, because of the, the timing of this, this uh, system moving in. I want to put a special thank you out to Stephen Winhouse, who is uh, emailing a large mailing list um, to uh, the Internet, tell people about this broadcast. We real, really appreciate it. We also have live, LiveNewsCameras.com covering our, showing our coverage today. We appreciate that as well, and uh, the word is getting spread around. A lot of people are finding out about the Hurricane City broadcast. You know, we don't have all the million-dollar tools like a lot of these television stations have, but I can pull up different images and kind of give you a more of an angle of how the Internet is producing the hurricane and what's being still live right there. There was a report of a tornado going through Corpus Christi, and uh, we're still trying to confirm that. There's been some roof damage. We're, we're, inter uh, we're monitoring the Herwarn. Uh, program which gives us the alerts from the emergency management on confirmed um, sightings and damage reports and we're monitoring that we haven't had anything come in you know this is pretty common when hurricanes are making landfall that you don't get a whole lot of reports during the hurricane because the, the officials are not out surveying the situation so this will all come in as time goes by a uh, friend of uh, email from a friend here says, "Hey Jim, my friend lives in South Padre Island, Texas, and he has a anemometer reading of 89 miles per hour, gusting to 105. And he also saw two roofs blow off and a sign that's blown down, and uh, that's that was shown on Fox News as well. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Hoping, uh, wondering if that anemometer is out in the open or if it's it's uh, obstructed or what's going on with the readings." All right, the printer's going off. We must have something hot off the press here. Let's check it. Okay, let's see here. From uh, preliminary local storm report corrected from the National Weather Service, Brownsville, Texas. Um, this is from earlier. The roof of a mobile home blown off. Um, Okay, well, this is a repeat of the same uh, same thing about the mobile home roof being blown off from earlier this morning in uh, Brownsville. So this is just a repeat. The waves again, just basically chewing away at the coast, 
There's been a lot of beach erosion. I'm looking down at some of the dunes, and you can just see them kind of chewed away here. But the good news is, as long as that right front part of the storm doesn't come ashore, we won't get the big surge. But if it does, that's a whole different story. Inches, and there it is. Some of the brown hues you see here, some of the highest cloud tops. That's where some of the heavier rain is. And that eye just now becoming a little ragged, Ebony, so it's kind of going back and forth a bit. Yeah, and we talked about the rain around Brownsville. We've seen quite a bit in Corpus Christi just within the... In fact, let's check the... This is from the last one hour of uh, RECO observations from the Hurricane Hunters. And they're checking the winds down off the coast of Mexico right now. And let's zoom in on this and see what they have. Uh, we're talking off the coast of Mexico down here. We have southwest winds of about 56 miles per hour. And right immediately off the coast of Laguna Madre down here in Mexico, we're talking west winds of uh, 56 miles an hour out of the west. So that's right offshore. And uh, these are all south of the center of circulation. All wind, winds out of the west and southwest of around 35 to 55 miles per hour. Well down near Laguna Madre, which is well south of Brownsville here. And that's the current Hurricane Hunter reports. In fact, the latest one we have is from, uh, from 1507, which is uh, about uh, 40 minutes ago. This is a, re a reco message from, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1510 is the last yeah, that's about 10 after 11 Eastern time, and that's our latest uh, observation showing the uh, winds out of the southwest at 56 miles an hour, about 50, well, a little over 50 miles an hour out of the southwest, and this is way south of where the center of circulation is, so they're really going to get buffeted up there in Brownsville. If it's the winds are this strong offshore, this part of the south of the center of circulation, then they're going to have big problems when this comes ashore. And again, that's our current uh, position of our system. Actually, it's uh, okay. We have more information coming in. Our current position, right there. Uh, that might be a little bit ambitious, by the way. I don't think the eye is on shore yet. This is a little bit ahead of here, uh, because if you look at our current. Uh, image uh, radar image from WeatherTap, you can see the eye is still offshore. It's not on the coast as the HerTrack pro pro program is showing here. The Hurricane HerTrack program using the uh, Hurricane Hunter program and we see here we have east winds just offshore of 75 miles per hour off Brownsville, Texas and then just to the south we have west winds at about the same speed, almost gusting up to 80 miles an hour in some cases and these are fresh re reco in, in, uh, observations from the Hurricane Hunters. And you're listening to Hurricane Watch Net. They're trying to pull up damage reports. We're monitoring their interwarn program and all the major networks and showing you radar feeds. Here is the latest radar from uh, the weather tap. And you can see that the system is just offshore. And there's those bands. The southern bands here are what we're measuring uh, with the Hurricane Hunters uh, showing the deep reds here right offshore Brownsville those are sustained winds out of the west of about 80 miles per hour so this is a definitely bona fide cat one for sure at the surface uh, we do have a, officially a category two with 100 mile per hour winds but not, many people are not going to feel those category two winds except in some gusts slightly early on the models thought that would be too earlier with ridge building in and pushing it on shore instead it's moving northwest and right now Brownsville's inland just a little bit we expect the center of circulation to possibly miss Brownsville to the north. When it makes landfall farther to the north up here, good news, there's not much there except National Seashore. So it might be that the strongest winds stay offshore and the back edge of the system will still come in and cross Brownsville. We could still see some wind damage, but the strongest surge we expect to be just north of South Padre, maybe just about uh, 15 or 20 miles north of where Jim Cantori is right now. But uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly on where everything lines up. But it's looking better for Brownsville for the Category 2 winds. Nevertheless, we're still going to see widespread power outages down here. We've already seen some. You've heard Jim mention that. And those power outages could sneak as far north as Rockport or a little farther north over the next 24 hours as this system comes in, probably north of uh, Brownsville, about 50 miles or so, over the next three or four hours. Um, now they are flying north, the, the hurricane hunters are flying due north along the coast and we have um, 
just off the coast of Padre Island here. They are flying and they're finding uh, east winds of 75 miles an hour, due east winds 75 miles an hour. And uh, we get further down, let's see, let's get closer to the center of circulation down here. They've, here's a gust of uh, 86 miles an hour out of the east. And that was at uh, 1550, 1533. UTC, which is about 11, about uh, about 20, 25 minutes ago, they found uh, east winds of 86 miles an hour just offshore Padre. And uh, let's go. Here's a, ooh, here's a 78 knot wind. Uh, it's 88 miles an hour out of the east, and that was around 25 minutes ago. Um, let's see if we have any higher gusts here. Yeah, there's the vortex message, 966. Let's get rid of the RECO so you can see that. Uh, there's your vortex message right at the bottom of the screen. That's the center of circulation. That's the center of circulation. And uh, get the volume turned down on the, the pool network feed. Um, here's the uh, vortex information, 60, 66 knots, that's 76 mile per hour winds in the center of the hurricane at the surface. That's at the surface. Now flight level wind 69 knots, that's uh, 79 miles per hour. Maximum flight level wind in the northeast quadrant 86 knots. So they're going to keep this around 100 miles an hour, but again that's only in those small thunderstorms northeast of the center. Um, and the, the maximum flight level wind outbound 79 knots in the northern quadrant, so uh, about 90 miles per hour. Uh, they're finding here in the Hurricane Hunters, but uh, the, the millibars have come up a little bit to 966, so we may have seen this thing uh, reach its maximum intensity here of 100 miles per hour. We'll have to see about that. Uh, again, let's put the RECO observations on the screen, and there they are. That's the latest we have uh, right along the coast of Padre Island. They're, they're flying due north here. They're heading north and checking out the winds to the north of the center and we're picking winds here 75 miles per hour out of the east just offshore of Padre Island. now. It's kind of funny to listen to them prepping for their uh, newscast. It's pretty interesting stuff here. Let's go ahead and leave this up for a minute. This is from uh, Corpus Christi though I believe. I do not think this is from South and Brownsville. Thank you. 
I just pulled up a weather observation from uh, Rincon Dan uh, del San Jose, which is uh, Laguna Madre, Texas. And uh, they're showing that the winds here are uh, out of the east at 40 miles per hour, gusting to 50 miles per hour. Pressure 2958. This does not. This doesn't seem like it's fresh, though. Um, this is from 954. Now these are old. This is from this morning. These haven't updated in a while, so disregard that. Can you hear me? Did we lose signal? Quick, quick. I mean, we got to do this fast, guys. Mike, I think we lost the uh, audio. I don't hear anything. We know when noon is. Dollar. Wind has changed dramatically throughout the day, starting but now in a swirling type fashion. We're starting to get a lot more rain just uh, in the last major you're concerned with this hurricane that it is just going to inundate a lot of inland Texas. Slammed into this area now, Category 2. And as it moves further inland, of course, the concern is going to be about tornadoes and the ever-present... And there he is live on CNN. Flooding. That's the very latest from South Padre Island. I'm Sean Caleb's. Now back to you. All right, Sean, thank you so much. We'll apologize, too. Obviously, some technical problems there, but he is in the middle of a hurricane, so it's expected. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, this is getting a little sketchy. We've got a pretty good sense of things being under control. Let's hope it stays that way, sir. Best of luck to you. Thank you. You have a great day. And you. Let's go right now to Jeff Ranieri, NBC Weather Plus's guy on South Padre Island for us. We had some trouble in the last hour with his satellite signal because of the weather, understandably so, Jeff. Give me an update, though, on what you're seeing and, and feeling where you are. Well, uh, certainly uh, South Padre Island is feeling the pressure from Dolly, which has been bearing down uh, with winds at a tropical storm strength for over 12 hours now. Uh, I can tell you right now, I'm in this uh, corridor looking towards the beach in the hotel, and you can hear the wind howling. It's putting a lot of pressure on the windows. As a, a lot of this air has nowhere else to go, but it starts going through the cracks of the windows. The rooms in the hotel room, at least on the, the side facing some of the strongest winds on the northern side, uh, the drapes almost lifted up by the air uh, that, that is trying to get into the building. Now, we've seen some uh, leaks in the hotel. We've seen some debris flying out uh, of outside. Uh, we've heard of no major damage on the shoreline, and, and I'm happy to report, too, uh, you know, we haven't seen too many uh, people wandering around. Uh, they've got the message, this storm is strengthened to Category 2, and it means business. And I think, you know, as we've been following today, Allison, as you well know, uh, not only has it gained strength, but it's slow moving movement uh, means this area is going to get battered with more wind and more rain for a, a much longer time uh, than originally expected. Oh, and tell me how many stories you are up right now and also whether or not the windows have been taped. Is it that kind of ferocious storm that you worry about windows being shattered? Uh, you know, uh, I'm up on the fourth floor and that's where, uh, you know, as you increase in, in height, 
uh, in the atmosphere, the winds just tend to get stronger and stronger. It's just the nature uh, of how winds work. So being up on the fourth floor, probably about 30, 40 feet up in the air, uh, these winds are, are going even faster at the surface. So uh, it is putting a lot of pressure on the windows. I turned my uh, couch the other way uh, to block the window and put some cushions there just in case the windows uh, do happen to break under the pressure. Uh, but one thing that I think uh, was great to see yesterday is I was actually surprised it covered a lot of hurricanes, a lot of Category 1s, a lot of tropical storms. There were more places boarded up than I've ever seen with an impending Category 1 storm. So I think those people that did board up in Brownsville, in uh, Port Isabel, and also here in South Padre uh, are very thankful as we're getting wind gusts near the center, which is very... You can see those wind barbs on your screen just off Corpus Christi. Uh, these are the latest as of 1556 UCC, which is just about 10, 15 minutes ago. The recon, the hurricane hunters are flying off Corpus Christi now. And we have east winds of about 45 miles per hour just offshore. Uh, east winds, uh, yeah, 36, uh, it's about 40, 45. Highest gust here, uh, a little bit further south, you get closer to the hurricane. Uh, highest wind gust off Corpus Christi right now is about 60 miles per hour out of the east, and that is offshore Corpus Christi. Now, if we look. South Padre Island and where the eye of this storm has come ashore. We're starting to come ashore here in South Texas and in northern Mexico. We have driven the streets of uh, downtown uh, Brownsville. We've seen very little damage, just a lot of uh, peeling away of palm trees and limbs and that sort of thing, uh, far from any kind of catastrophic damage. That is the good news at this point. Roger, roger, roger. you guys a uh, pole on the tennis court just come tumbling down. I'm talking about the whole pole. And imagine this, uh, Ebony, you've seen a pine cone. I know we, we all have. Imagine taking the little outside parts of the cone off, peeling it. That, that's what this palm tree in front of me looks like. So whether it be some kind of aluminum fascia board or just the wind itself, I have never seen a palm tree like peeled like a banana uh, from the top down to the bottom. So this is a something I've, I've never even seen before. But the winds continue to howl here, guys. They're out of the west right now, so we're just hanging, hammered by this eye wall. We have seen uh, just debris everywhere, and it looks like there's a lot of roof damage uh, to our hotel. As a matter of fact, uh, they're thinking about moving some of the guests down and into other rooms because of the potential leaks. Just above me, for example, when I was talking to you probably about 40 minutes ago, I could hear my roof flapping up and down. So it's definitely become loose. That means water's getting in there. And uh, no signs yet of leakage, but I'm sure some of these roofs here, if this continues, are going to start to leak uh, pretty, pretty soon. We've tried to get out. We've shot some video for you, but you got to stay pretty close to, uh, to the building or, or you're just putting yourself in danger out there. Our satellite dish is down. As soon as these winds die down, we will put it back up. And, uh, and give you some live pictures. Guys, stick around. we got a lot more to go with Dolly. All right, Jim, appreciate it. And, of course, with all that flying debris, it's a very good idea to have everybody indoors. This is a serious situation. Plenty still coming up. Yeah. Okay, uh, latest from Brownsville, pa South Padre Island International Airport. West winds gusting to 67 miles per hour out of the west. And that... that 
figures because down here is Brownsville looking at this radar and uh, we said the strongest winds are around 80 up here in the red areas here out of the west so that they're a little bit south of that so that makes sense they're getting gusts to around 67 miles an hour in Brownsville right now those are very high winds we said uh, Hurricane Dolly at this moment uh, is landing on shore in this area between Corpus Christi and Brownsville we're, we're watching it uh, really minute by minute throughout the hour. Yeah, and it's now a stronger uh, Category 2 hurricane. And here's a look at the kind of damage that we can see from a storm like this. We're talking about wind speeds between 96 and 110 miles per hour, though some have said these gusts could be upwards of 115 miles an hour. With those types of winds, you can expect significant damage to the windows, roofs, as we've already seen, uh, the trees, the plants around there. Metal signs easily blown down these kinds of winds, and there can be considerable damage to mobile homes. And let's not forget that this could also spawn a great deal of tornadic um, information from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft and there it is up on the screen they are flying off the coast of Texas uh, now they're flying uh, off the coast of Mexico rather uh, they went south of Brownsville flying south and about as far away from the eye wall as you can get right now this is from 1700 UTC which is uh, 1 p.m. this is about 15 minutes old uh, we have um, wind speed out of the west at only six miles an hour so it really drops off now we go further north and we see uh, uh, again very light winds 20 30 40 miles an hour they're really dropping off down in Mexico right now which is good news so uh, they're gonna have light winds down in Mexico uh, now as we get closer up towards the eye wall um, <clears throat> in fact we get off the coast of Brownsville we have uh, 68 mile an hour winds out of the west and then we get right near the southern eye wall, 73 mile per hour winds out of the west. So that's the latest recon uh, messages from the Hurricane Hunter. Okay, I got an email from Hannah, and the uh, she's a regular on the message board. It helps contributes to Hurricane City. Uh, her sister lives in Brownsville, Texas, and she just got off the phone with her at uh, about 30 minutes ago. And she lives in Rancho Viejo, Texas. She is just north of Brownsville and south of Harlingen, Texas. And I asked her the following questions. What are the winds like? She said, not very intense, about 45 miles per hour. What's the rain like? Heavy, but not too bad, but it's nasty. Is there any flooding yet? She said, no, there's no flooding. The road is fine. The golf course is wet, but no flooding. And what if any power situation? Uh, there's uh, no power outages at this time and any type of damage, no. So things are looking good. Uh, just uh, north of Brownsville, Texas, that's a report from an observer about 30 minutes ago in Brownsville, Texas. So it's not real bad north of the city, but I would imagine the closer you get to the coast, if we pull up the radar here, um, the closer you get to the coast where these deep reds are here north of Brownsville, the more damage we're going to see. And I've seen this on radar numerous times in hurricanes. And when you see these dark reds, uh, in, in winds of 80, 90 miles an hour, there's a lot of damage going on. There's a lot of wind damage that's going to take place just north of Brownsville, and you'll see the damage in the uh, upcoming, in the aftermath over the next few days. Also got a report from the uh, Interwarn program. 67 mile per hour wind gust associated with Hurricane Dolly was reported in Cameron, Texas. Um, this was about uh, 20 minutes ago, and uh, that was from the National Weather Service preliminary. Now we have a new something new coming in here. Let's check that first. Okay, according to this, uh, ship captain has estimated wind gusts of 100 miles per hour, and that's from a train spotter in Cameron, South Padre Island. A ship captain has estimated a wind gust of 100 miles per hour. I don't know if estimated, I don't know if he has instruments going there. I guess it's just him eyeballing it, so we'll see about that. But that's as of uh, about uh, 20, that's a few minutes ago. He just reported this, a wind gust of 100 miles per hour on South Padre Island by a train spotter who's a ship captain.
Okay, just to let you know what you're looking at, this is the live cam shot, uh, dash cam from Fox News. They're driving around, sending live video over the internet. Great job of producing this, and we're going to stick on this while we play the hurricane watch net. About 20 minutes ago, uh, we have winds out of the east now at 44, uh, 50, let's see. Okay, we got a vortex message in there too. Let's go ahead and look at that. This is right as it was making shore, on shore, the eye wall, uh, let me get it up on the screen. There it is. There's where the uh, vortex message is from the Hurricane Hunters, 70 not uh, 69 knots that's 79 mile per hour winds just offshore Padre Island uh, at the surface and flight level information 75 miles an hour and maximum flight level winds 86 knots and that's about uh, 96 almost 100 miles an hour uh, in the northern quadrant in the northeast quadrant of the hurricane now if we put the RECO observations back up and this is only the past hour uh, here we go this these are the strongest winds right along the coast right now and we're talking um, let's see 70 about 80 miles an hour here out of the southwest 80 miles an hour out of the southwest uh, just northeast of Brownsville Texas offshore the winds are northeast at 75 uh, miles an hour and then when we get just north of the eye wall we see the winds are not all that strong. Of course, we haven't gotten to some of the stronger bands up here north, but talking 60 mile an hour winds out of the east right now, uh, just offshore of Padre Island, and we're waiting for the next set of observations to come in. So that's where it stands right now. Again, there's our current position of Hurricane Dolly moving on shore southern Texas. And here's a live cam shot. Um, not sure where this is from. I think this might be Corpus Christi. Notice the waves coming in, but not that bad in Corpus Christi. And there's the cam shot from Corpus Christi facing south, and you can see the waves rushing in here. But Corpus Christi is only getting winds right now of, um, let me check the observations from Corpus Christi. 
and we're talking winds here of uh, yeah, 45 mile an hour gusts right now in Corpus Christi, Te Texas Naval Air Station. So probably a little windier out here on the beaches. Here's an email that just came in from somebody. Uh, uh, Harlingen's Medica Medical Center's weather bug recorded one inches of rain per 12 minutes or averaging five inches of rain per hour. Um, the latest as of 12.58 p.m. was 11.02 inches. That sounds closer to eight inches an hour on average. The rainfall average is getting so high that I might put my floaties on and I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. This is from Nick Pavoltis of Lodovitis. I hope I'm not mangling that name, uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. Thanks for the email, Nick. I appreciate the update. And here's the Google shot of the area that's being impacted. Uh, South, South Padre Island, a lot of condominiums out here that are just taking a beating. And you're going to see a lot of damage, especially in the higher elevations. Uh, when you get up around the fourth, fifth, sixth floors of these condominiums, the glass might blow out. People are going to have a lot of problems with the wind blowing their glass out in the higher elevations of these condominiums on Padre Island. So it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out when the damage reports come in. You can drive, you can see the storm surge out there. Uh, this was a, a nice wide beach yesterday. It's completely inundated with water right now. Just take a look at all the debris flying through the air space and take a look down below. Uh, that was a, a bar, I believe, uh, that was covered with a fast roof. Well, no more, you know, uh, once uh, the storm moves through. It's going to take a while for these areas to uh, pick up the pieces and recover. Here at this hotel, I'm seeing pieces of palm trees and the swimming pool. You know, a lot of these hotels actually put their pool furniture in the pool to safeguard it. The fact that they sure doesn't fly around, but a lot of other stuff uh, is, is ending up in there, too. And a lot of sand being blown around. It's just a mess out here, Trace. I see storm winds move in. And Dolly makes landfall. We're seeing the full brunt of it, right? Here are reports that these very severe winds are ripped a roof off an apartment complex that's about a mile at the beach. We no reports of injuries. Where I was earlier, we saw parts of a skylight strewn around on the grassy lawn. But again, uh, no one was hurt in that. But you really do have to be careful with all the debris flying around in these very strong winds. Okay, folks, up on your screen are the latest uh, RECO observations from the Hurricane Hunters. And you can see that the Northern Eye Wall is really uh, somewhat collapsed this afternoon as it's moving inland here. Uh, looking at all these observations, we're seeing uh, 59, 69 mile an hour east winds. Uh, oh, there's a good gust. 85, 95, uh, 95 mile an hour wind. Um, let me see something here. Now, there's a gust almost 100 miles an hour. Let's see, right? Uh, where did I find that? Right there, um, right where my uh, mouse pointer is, right there, the Hurricane Hunters just reported wind gusts near 100 miles per hour out of the east. Um, and uh, that's, uh, incredible 85 mile an hour wind speed there right off the coast of Padre Island. That's the highest I can find. Uh, and there's again 80, 90 mile an hour, 95 mile an hour gusts just offshore Padre Island as the eye moves on shore. But the further north you go here, when you get up towards like where Kennedy County is, offshore Kennedy County, and up towards Corpus, the winds are about 60 miles an hour out of the east. So the winds drop off significantly here the further north you go. So are you on the middle floor, on the top floor, uh, or are you uh, on the lowest floor? We're on the second floor, and actually I'm facing the Gulf right now. I'm looking out, and tell you what, it looks just like a desert out there, the way the wind is blowing. There's a lot of erosion, I think, is what we're going to find when this is all said and done. But uh, we're on the second floor, and uh, that's probably the safer place to be. But again, it's, you're talking about a lot of wind and an older building, so the, this roof is kind of blowing apart here. Right, so that hotel is facing the Gulf? Yeah, we're facing the Gulf. This room, uh, our, uh, the room we're shooting from and where you saw Jim all, all day and all morning, uh, we're facing the Gulf, but then our rooms are on the side of the building, so we thought we'd be better protected that way. Uh, but a lot of those rooms are leaking, like I said, and I'd say just about two or three rooms uh, down from me is where a large section of roof, and we have some video that we'll hopefully get to show you once we get our truck back up 
and able to feed you that video, but uh, the part, just basically part of that entire hotel room is now blown out, including the windows. We have seen signs go down. Firefighters are all over helping people evacuate. They're deciding not to evacuate. But you can see, this is a Category 2 hurricane, and it's incredibly treacherous, and most people are surprised by how strong it is. This is Gary Tuck from CNN, South Padre Island, Texas. Primarily out of the west, West winds are coming in here in all these uh, communities to the South Padre Island. A lot of condominiums, hotels, a big tourist area. There's going to be a lot of broken glass in those condominiums and apartments, especially in the higher elevations. Uh, the higher floors, uh, 10, 12 stories up, there's going to be a lot of broken glass in those buildings. So uh, we hope the people have made the precautions and they have a safe place to hide in those buildings. When we go a little bit further up the coast, and it's a little bit less populated up here. This is where the northern eye wall winds are going to come in. And you're going to see winds out of the east here about 80 miles an hour as the center of Hurricane Dolly makes landfall. The first one five storm tracking team has really been a pleasure working with you guys through this storm. And, and a, a pat on the back a couple of times, but it's just great to know about it's still a very strong, dangerous system. <laughs> yes, it uh, it's still shaking the roof here at News Channel 5. It uh, is showing some signs that it's starting to uh, go down a few notches in strength. We're hoping that trend is going to continue throughout the night. It's just going to be sl slow to uh, weaken. It's also going to be slow to move. We've got the same thing coming up right on through at least I would say midnight and probably after that for most of the flooded streets right now there's debris everywhere we've been driving down 1015 we've been driving down old highway 83 and there's debris everywhere uh, there's some houses that have started to be uh, have been getting to get some flooding in their area uh, there's been cars there's some cars that have been um, on the side of their house and you can see the water is just rising up and a lot of what we're seeing is a lot of palm trees a lot of trees have it toppled over onto uh, the street, and there's also lots of water. And the, the flooding, it seems like it's just starting around here in this neighborhood, and it doesn't look safe at all. And as we did mention earlier, we were trying to drive down Expressway 83, trying to get to Harlingen, and it was very difficult because there was water on the frontage road, and it started to fill up towards the expressway. We're, we're, the we're looking at a car right now on the expressway from our Sky 5. I can't imagine what they're doing out there, why they'd be on the expressway, because our, our lights inside the studio might are shaking like you wouldn't believe, and you can hear the wind just howling outside. And in Raymondville, what should you do? Don't go outside. Stay indoors. Even though it's calm now, you're going to be getting hit with the other side of that eye wall here within a matter of time, probably yeah. not anytime soon. Well, if it's moving 10 miles an hour, yeah, yeah, if it is indeed moving 10 miles an hour, it won't take too long. And so, you look at that, the hole in the middle of the radar, you know, that's a unique uh, thing to hurricanes. Now, over here, it's really, really nasty. Over here, it's really, really nasty. Same thing down here and up here. And that's all moving basically toward the west. So, it's going to head toward Highway 281. Folks up and down 281, this is coming your way. No need to be driving out there either. Now, let's go. And look at the wraparound on the back side of it. You may see this ending and the uh, coastal communities by early tomorrow morning then you'll have another band of some stormy weather coming on through with some heavy rain some stormy uh... skies some gusty winds probably sometime during the day on thursday that's a heck of, uh... the weather bug there and the winds are sustained at forty five miles an hour and the winds have been sustained how long, how long have we been watching winds of forty plus over there uh, about two hours about two hours do you think that'll do something yeah um, that'll take some trees with it and you add the rain to that and the problems just continue so these uh, some of these calls that we get here kind of make you emotional too. Just got a call from someone who lost the roof there a few minutes ago, and it's uh, just it's it's sad to hear, you know, that your neighbors and your friends are having a hard time like this, and it's mm -hmm. a real emotional time, a trying time uh, for all of us. You see, you know, pieces of the roof, little by little. This isn't the one to call that you got, but pieces of that roof, little by little, are, are peeling away, and and folks are losing their roofs all across the valley. Just a short clip there, but you can see the shingles starting to go, and one piece at a time. See, one piece at a time, that roof begins to peel away, and that's the story that's being repeated over and over and over and over across the valley today. Um, you know, I'd like to say there's some more video of this, you know, another roof off of a convenience store, it looks like, uh, that's going. I'd like to say that 
that in Mercedes, I would like to, uh, you know, traffic light dangling. I'd like to say that, that, you know, that storm is moving quickly, and by 10 o'clock tonight, it's going to be over. And, you know, by the time you get up in the morning, you go to work and you've forgotten all this. But, but again, that's, that's not the case. He's gone through it all. What have you seen today? And uh, I'm hoping my mic will pick it up. Oh, it just, it's been horrible out there. I've never seen it like this at all, all the time I worked here. It's, it's been really tough. And tell them how long you've worked here. Oh, well, here about almost 27 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just the worst I've ever seen. Uh, the rain, the wind, it's unbelievable. All right, and mm -hmm. we're saying, we're being told right now, uh, Expressway, Expressway 83, 83 near, mile. near mile 3 in La Feria, underwater, yes. impassable. I'm sure yes. you guys are we getting off, mm -hmm. off the roads right now. Right. We had to turn back. You got traffic coming back on the opposite lane. On the thing, you know, the, the opposite, the traffic coming back. Again, Only one just, side, on yes. one side. It, it is just water. Debris is, is flying all over the place. Nothing like you've ever mm -hmm. seen. Nothing. Like yeah, you all talked to some, some and folks out there. Oh, I mean, Isn't that crazy? In the wind, you should hear hear it out there. It's howling, boy, like I never heard. You know how you, you always do stories about tornadoes and how people can hear the the wind coming. They can hear like a train. That's exactly how it sounds out there. So we are here in Mercedes. our job. We're out here trying to bring you the latest, trying to keep you informed on anything that's going here around in the valley. But the frontage roads are flooded. The expressway is flooded. There's barrels all across the expressway. And it's making it very difficult for drivers to move around the valley. So we will keep you updated and we will keep you informed on the latest. Okay, uh, Joel, you out on, uh, out on the island. Uh, uh, what else did you see out there, uh, road-wise and, and debris and things like that? Well, here's something interesting. Um, at one point, we did notice vehicles coming back and forth from the island. So we were under the impression that the island was, in fact, open again. So we contacted local authorities, and they informed us that, in fact, the island was not open. And basically, these people were coming back and forth at their own risk. Um, oh, not, not, not a good move. Not a good move at all. Um, local authorities did, however, quickly uh, try to block off the causeway at the opening. Um, and as we were leaving, we did notice that we did note that uh, local authorities did, in fact, block off the causeway with their vehicles. So there was no way that anyone else would go out there. Why they would want to go out there, I'm not sure. We did notice there was uh, several people. Uh, we're driving around trying to take pictures of things, trying to figure out where their businesses were, where their homes once were, and there was so much destruction out there. Um, it's really hard to describe uh, it in every detail. Um, do, do you remember what time that was, uh, Joel? What we left. Well, nothing happened, and I, I, I spent oh, all this I money know. on plywood. I bought all the right the ups in the paper. Food that items. Brian Hill scared me to death. Um, and, and you know, it, it, it's I, I been known to happen. Good. Yeah, but you want to know what uh, the coverage? Uh, you know, from and I'm biased, obviously, right now. But uh, I, if I was sitting at home listening, I felt like informed every step of the way. You know, you, you call it as you see it. Uh, this was a Cat 1 turned Cat 2 quickly and, and a fairly aggressive Cat 2. That eye wall, it, we didn't know when it was going to make landfall. It was mm -hmm. teetering. It was sucking up that gulf moisture. Mm -hmm. And you needed to sound the alarm in parts. And, and you know yeah. what? At, at 10.32 at night, when we've been starting this since last night, to be sitting here thinking that the eye wall is just now going mm -hmm. across Raymondville? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I know. It's just, Are you kidding I, me? I would it's, never have put money on that. Never.